So whether you're a tarot beginner or you already know something about tarot, I don't need to tell you probably that the swords have sort of a bad rep <laughs> because they are a very ruthless suit. So I'm actually kind of looking forward to tackling the court cards today of the sword suit. Um, I would recommend watching my intro video about the court cards if you haven't watched it yet because I talk about the basic energies and the basic structures of the cards there. Now, as always, we will talk about the encouraging aspects of the swords and the warning aspects of the swords and go through each of the four court cards individually. I will also use the um, tarot mucha in order to illustrate some of this because as I've said in other videos, it has very, very good court card imagery, great deck to learn with and to understand these energies with. Now let's talk about the page of swords. The page of swords combines the earth energy of the pages with the air energy of the swords. It's a pretty solid combination, honestly, because you have this idea of being interested in philosophy, in opinions, in logic, in rationale from the air side. And then you have this conscientious approach, um, this willingness to learn from the earth side of things. So learning something, studying something very diligently and on a logical level, that's what the page of sorts is about. It can also be a reminder to not be too headstrong and to open your mind. The Page of Swords is interested and curious about all sorts of things. So learning about new ideas, new opinions, new philosophies without being too stuck in your own mind is the energy that he embodies often. And the willingness to dive into a new subject and being honest and saying, I know nothing about this, but I'm willing to learn. It can be a call to open your mind to more possibilities than the limited ones you are seeing right now. And it is about legitimate curiosity without that fake sense of needing to show off. Both when you learn on your own or when you converse with others, it's really about being curious. Remember that the air energy is also about communication, about learning through listening to others and also passing on knowledge by talking about what you've learned. Now let's talk about the Knight of Swords. He has the worst rep. I talked about this in the Cups video as well, that the Knight of Cups is sort of the idealized, wonderful Prince Charming that everyone sees. And the Knight of Swords, poor guy, he's sort of, he's the bad one. <laughs> the bad one in the court family. So, we often see him described as very inflexible, very headstrong, way too convinced of his opinions, too convinced of his approach, too convinced of logic, too convinced of taking a rational mindset to any situation in life. And I don't know how this came about that the poor Knight of Swords was just seen in a negative way, but it's just how it is with some cards. You know, every single card in tarot has positive aspects, negative aspects, or as I like to say, encouraging and cautionary aspects. But with the Knight of Swords, the cautionary aspects are definitely so much more talked about. Now let's talk about the positives because the Knight of Swords, they are laser focused. I think that is really important here. Laser focused on a goal because we have the fire energy from the Knights combined with the air energy of the sword suit. So having the self-confidence to go after something you want without compromise, it can be a good thing. It can be a good thing. It can also be a bad thing, obviously, but there's no reason to immediately see it as a bad thing as so many people do with the Knight of Swords. So um, yes, he may be missing compassion or empathy sometimes, but some situations in life require some degree of ruthlessness and that is really what the Knight of Swords is about. So in this case, you can see the Knight of Swords as a call to take brave, fiery, passionate action, but in a logical way. Maybe sometimes pushing other people's opinions to the sidelines or even pushing other people out of the way in order to reach your goal. Can be a good thing, can be a bad thing, whatever you see in the spread that you are looking at. Now let's talk about the Queen of Swords. She is also another favorite besides the Queen of Cups. Uh, I mean, the Queen of Wands. Honestly, everyone loves all the queens anyways, because tarot readers, they go for the queens, <laughs> myself included. So the Queen of Swords, she is really the bad bitch 
of the queens, no question. She protects herself and her family ruthlessly. I said before, the queen is water energy as well. She has a certain receptive and caring quality. Queens traditionally take care of the court. They take care of the people of the realm. So she is there to protect ruthlessly and defend herself and those that she loves. There's a lot of Cersei energy in the Queen of Swords. I would say if there was ever a character who embodies the Queen of Swords perfectly, it's Cersei in Game of Thrones. I hope you know her. If you don't, you can read about her to understand this energy better. So yeah, the sword is there for a reason. It is about cutting away what isn't good for her and about um, cutting out anyone who isn't good for her. That can be a little bit harsh, but sometimes it's also necessary. And this card is always a call to set boundaries bravely. It's an energy about communication. Remember, air energy, sword energy is about the throat chakra. It's about communication. It's about conversing, about stating your opinion and communicating boundaries in this case. And because the Queen of Swords is a combination of the watery queen energy and the airy sword energy, she protects her heart very fiercely and emotions are often hidden behind a facade of logic or behind a facade of rational thinking. So if the Queen of Swords comes up for you, this is probably not the time to be vulnerable, to show yourself, to really emerge with your emotions on the tip of your tongue, but rather a time of withdrawing a bit, thinking logically and keeping your heart in check so that you don't get hurt. Now, many people will say this comes from a place of fear, protecting yourself like this, but sometimes, as I say, with a sword so often, it's necessary to do these things. Sometimes you gotta be a bit fierce, a bit ruthless, communicate clearly, and that's what this queen is about. Now, obviously, we have the danger or the cautionary side of things that is about not being too selfish with the Queen of Swords and about not cutting off people without compassion. So just like the Knights, she may be missing empathy a little bit, um, but sometimes that's necessary. I keep saying that, but I just want to remind people that there's nothing inherently wrong with setting boundaries, even if some people might say that you know, they don't understand it or you have no right to do it, but sometimes you got to stand your ground and that's what this queen is about. The queen of swords can also be an overthinker. So if the card comes up, it could be telling you not to think too much, not to interpret and analyze your emotions until they are dead on the floor, but rather to feel a little bit more and to give yourself some time rather than expecting complete emotional logic all the time. Now let's talk about the King of Swords. We have double air energy here because, as I said in the intro video, the kings are associated with air and the swords are associated with air as well. So we have the ultimate logical planner here, the ultimate rational thinker. In the Muha Tarot, what I love about this depiction of the King of Swords is that you cannot tell whether he is drawing his sword out or putting it away, sheathing it. Now, this is a wonderful image because the King of Swords knows when to fight and when to withdraw, when to stop. He knows that there is no shame in not leading a useless discussion, in not dragging a discussion that has no value. So unlike the knight who is very focused and very headstrong, um, this king knows that you sometimes have to withdraw, that you sometimes have to let go of something that doesn't serve you anymore, to not overtalk, to not get involved if there's no merit for you, if it doesn't concern you, the issue, or if it's legitimately bad for you to get involved in certain situations. That's the sort of judgment call that the King of Swords is able to make, whether he needs to step up and really show his logic, discuss things, communicate clearly, or just step down 
and let the others do the work. Of course, the cautionary element with this double air energy is that you shouldn't get too stuck in rational thinking. You shouldn't get too stuck in philosophy. Sometimes that can be um, a defense mechanism where we rationalize our own feelings, we rationalize our trauma and try not to feel it by putting this idea of logic over it and by not acting on it, but rather just, you know, thinking, 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 and not really acting. So yeah, that's what the court cards of the swords are about. Now I'm going to put links to other tarot videos, spreads below, and also the other um, court card videos that I did. Feel free to subscribe, dwell in my domain a little longer. My Instagram is below, my Patreon is below. I would love it if you took a peek at that. And I hope that you have the greatest of days, the greatest of weeks, and I will see you soon.